Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. I am really glad that you could join me today. And if you're listening to this um, on iTunes, of course, you can hear it in Podomatic, iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, YouTube. It's on several platforms. But if you're listening to this on your iPhone, iPad, um, please uh, take a moment to leave a review or some feedback. You just can scroll down. Um, and you can definitely leave some stars. Five stars is great. And feedback, because all of that helps the show to be found by more listeners. So I hope you'll take a moment to do that. And also you can visit the website womenentrepreneursecrets.com. You can find out more about the guests and more about different topics of interest to women entrepreneurs. So I hope you will do that as well. And you can stop by my website, thebaileycoach.com, to find out more about me and my books and different things that I'm up to. So I hope that you will also check that out. But this show, I have a returning guest, best-selling author Margie Worrell, emboldens people with the courage and resilience to make braver decisions, take bolder actions, and create a bigger mark. Margie draws on her background in business, psychology, and coaching to develop better and braver leaders in organizations globally, from the UN Foundation to Salesforce. And the titles of her best-selling books, you've got this, Train the Brave, Make Your Mark, Stop Playing Safe, and Find Your Courage, and her Live Brave podcast reflect her belief in the potential of every person to overcome the fears and false beliefs that keep them from achieving the extraordinary. So welcome back to the show, Marty. It's great to be with you, Deb. I'm really happy uh, to talk with you again, and there's another book, and I was taking a look at that, and just seeing all the wonderful things you're talking about, and also your podcast, I was listening to that a little bit, so you've really got so many wonderful um, things going on, and you know, definitely a powerful message as we were kind of talking for the show, that is, is more than likely very needed right now, so I'm glad that you are delivering it, um, because I think a lot of us really need to hear that reinforcement. But, you know, I want to dive into the um, latest book, because there's so many wonderful things in there. And as you know, this is a show for women entrepreneurs, particularly, and a lot of times women kind of suffer from, like, say, lack of confidence or doubts and things like that to really get out there. So can we just kind of start talking about your thoughts about, let's say, the confidence, the doubt, the things that really hold us back. Yeah, look, all of us have doubt at times, and it's not a bad thing to have doubt. In fact, it's dangerous to actually never question or second-guess what your decisions are or yeah. what you're thinking on things. But too often, and my experience is, Deb, that women, we women, and so much of it is just because of the gendered world we've grown up in, we often doubt ourselves a lot more than the men we spend our lives with and we sell ourselves short and we don't own our strengths and our value as fully. And and so I believe that doubt, while it's not necessarily good or bad, when we give it too much power in our lives, mm -hmm. it can actually keep us taking the very actions that would help us realize that doubt, that doubt was a, was an invalid doubt. You know, I really, mm -hmm. I have got this. I, 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 I do have a lot to offer. I can figure this out. I can be successful. And there's no reason for me to be thinking, oh, who am I to be wanting to build this business or, you know, change mm -hmm. the world in this way? Yeah. And I think so much we, we can hold ourselves back or have that self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, 
making the, the choices that kind of lead us to fail. How do we work with that? <laughs> yeah, and I think that's where, and I, and I kind of go through a, a whole um, a framework in, in You've Got This to help people step back and really question our doubts, to doubt our doubts, and ultimately to defy those doubts that aren't serving us. And And I think just recognizing when you hear, I mean, all of us have that little voice in our head. I'm sure that everyone listening to this today at some point during the day has had a little voice in your head that said something to you that maybe is wanting you to hold back, stay silent, don't make the phone call, don't risk the rejection, mm-hmm. um, focusing in on what you're not good at, focusing in on what you haven't done or what you could have done better. I mean, let's face it. I think we women often, we can be our own harshest critics. Mm-hmm. And so there's a real power that comes from recognizing that those voices in our head and those thoughts that we're thinking, they're not the truth and they're not who we are. And the more we can separate ourselves out from them and kind of just go, yep, thank you very much, I fear. I know you want me to avoid ever putting myself out there. Mm-hmm. The more it actually frees us to go, all right, what is it that, I, that in my heart of hearts that, you know, that, that truthful part of me, that brave part of me, that part of me that's just those things that tug on the heartstrings, what does it want me to do? You know, what would my future self want me to do? You know, what is it that if I wasn't letting fear or doubt sit in the driver's seat that I would, what are the actions I would take? And and I know myself having left my comfort zone many, many, many times since growing up on a small farm in rural Australia and now doing the work I do around the world, mm-hmm. you know, the best things I've ever done, the most worthwhile things I've ever done have come from, not, from a place not where I wasn't having fear and I wasn't having doubt, but actually daring to defy those doubts. And saying, what the hell, I'm going to try and write the book. I'm going to try and build the business. I'm going to, you know, have the, chi- the extra child. I'm going, to, I'm going to do those things despite the, the, my concern that what if I don't have what it takes? Mm-hmm. And I think that's where, you know, the, the subtitle of the book is, you know, the life-changing power of trusting ourselves. Mm-hmm. Daring to trust ourselves absolutely liberates us to do things we would never otherwise do. That's very true. And um, one of the chapters in your book is Dial Up Your Daring. How do we go about that exactly? I think as women often, where our boys often, young men, you know, and I've heard this, I was just at an International Women's Day event last night, Mm -hmm. and we're talking about, and I've had so many conversations with people in leadership roles and said, you know, I often have these young guys come into my office and say, hey, how can I make partner by 30? How can I get the biggest the biggest project here? How can I get the most high profile, um, you know, um, client to to work on or whatever? Mm-hmm. And women are like, oh, you know, um, how can I be the most helpful? Um, or, you know, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that yet. They don't often advocate for themselves and they don't often uh, push hard to get to the same level as, mm-hmm. as, as men often do. Now, just recognizing that actually women can be judged more harshly for being ambitious. Mm-hmm. And often, actually, women can be biased against women and women can be biased against ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so just to me, this is about giving yourself permission to connect with the highest and to me, the holiest vision for your life. You know, what is it that would really light you up? What is it that would, you know, set your heart on fire if you were moving toward that vision? And, and, and giving yourself that space to connect with a vision that really excites you. And my, my experience is, is that the visions that excite us the most draw on our strengths. They draw on our talents. They draw on our, our passion. And so, so give yourself permission to connect with a vision that excites you. Mm-hmm. And don't let your fear of not having what it takes to turn that vision into reality keep you from moving toward it. And it's because it's actually not whether or not we achieve it that makes our lives uh, more enjoyable and rewarding to live. It's actually the very fact that we're daring to try. So when I write in Chapter 3, which is, you know, dial up your daring, you know, give yourself permission to move toward those daring aspirations. And, you know, social psychology, we know that, and from positive psychology, we know that we thrive the most in life, not from actually achieving the goal. It's actually in the pursuit of it. Mm 
It's it's getting out of bed in the morning going, you know what, I'm excited about what I'm working on. And, and yeah, things don't always go the way we want. Deb, I'm sure you've had lots of setbacks and derailed plans, and mm-hmm. I have had tons of them and actually quite a few in recent years. And, you know, they can give us kicks in the guts and you feel deflated. But when you're actually moving towards something that feels just like that's what you were, that's what you're here to do, mm-hmm. it, it uh, builds our resilience. It allows us to pick ourselves back up and get back on the horse toward, toward what it is we want. And so I would encourage anyone who's listening to, to just take time to connect and then to regularly reconnect with, with what it is that inspires you. And sometimes our vision, you know, it morphs and changes as we go through life and as we get to know things and we, we sometimes come across, you know, closed doors and we're like, mm-hmm. okay, that, it's not going to work if I go that way. But, but just by staying connected to what gives us a sense of purpose and meaning and brings life into our days, that in itself is is really transformative. Yes, it is. It, it really makes you feel very powerful when you make that connection. But, you know, I, I know a lot of people don't always believe in themselves. A lot of women don't believe that they should follow that calling or they think they should struggle. And, and the thing that they really want to do, they turn away from. What can we do to just trust that? I, I think nothing's going to land in your lap. Mm-hmm. If it was easy to do the things that you want to do, everyone would be doing it. I mean, if it was mm-hmm. easy to build the business that you're excited to build and to land the big client or whatever it is, you know, that, that relates, it's relevant for your business, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually be as meaningful for you to do it. So I think embrace those challenges, embrace the sometimes the the things that you find hard as part and parcel of what makes it meaningful mm-hmm. and i've i've met and worked with so many entrepreneurs and 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 so many of the most successful entrepreneurs have these stories of failure and hard times and difficulty and and actually they persisted and that maybe they they had to change the way they were doing things maybe they they reached the dead ends but, but I think firstly to, to shift how you're looking at the, the challenges that you're dealing with. And I think that when we embrace our struggles as part and parcel of what it takes to live a big meaningful life, mm-hmm. it transforms our experience of them. And instead of it being, oh, it shouldn't be this way. I, and I was sharing with you before we got on air, I do a lot of speaking at conferences around the world. And mm-hmm. that's how I learn a lot of, earn, actually my income is a lot of it is, is through speaking and facilitating programs. And with coronavirus, I've just had a slate all being cancelled. Um, mm-hmm. You know, companies and associations and event organisers are saying, you know what, we're just cancelling everything for the next few months. Mm-hmm. And I'm in the middle of launching a book. I'm like, huh, well... This wasn't part of the plan. You know? <laughs> and, and even income wise, like I've got kids in college, I've got fees, school fees to pay. I'm like, hmm, this isn't part of the plan. Mm-hmm. And, and I know I'm not alone in thinking that, right? I mm-hmm. know that there's a lot of people going right now, this isn't part of how right. it is. And so, you know, I can sit and rant and rail about it and go, this isn't right. It shouldn't be. It, look, it is as it is. Mm-hmm. And when we give up our fight with reality, when we give up Ranting and railing against what is outside our control. It actually allows us to channel our precious energy and our time and our creativity into coming up with, with improving the things that are inside our control. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, yeah, life is filled with situations that aren't as we'd like them to be. And I've had that with family struggles and family tragedies and I've had that in my professional life and as a business, you know, as an entrepreneur myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where that's where life is. That's the richness of life and it's who we choose to be and how we choose to show up in those moments. And when we operate from a place of I've got this, I'm going to figure this out. I haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm going to figure it out, but I am going to figure it out. And we have faith in ourselves and we choose that path of faith over the path of fear and we operate like we every day, you know, we're living from a place of I've got this, even when I'm not sure exactly how I've got this, but I am going to figure this out and I will prevail no matter what challenges are coming at me, no matter what get plans get derailed. 
it actually, it does put us in a way more powerful place to find the opportunity in our adversity. That's really true. <laughs> That's really true because things are always going to happen and come up and how, how do you manage that? is is so important and and one of your chapters also you you have dear women stop selling yourself short and and talking yourself down that is really uh fantastic because i think that's something that we all end up doing much too often and as you're saying when you have a setback or you have something that happens that, that seems to be defeating you it's so easy just to give up I shouldn't have done that I shouldn't have bothered I shouldn't have tried you know and we start running ourselves down so what what are some ways that we can get rid of that negative voice that tries to just blame us for for what just occurred I think you know the negative voice is anyway is always going to be there Mm -hmm. and and I think just recognizing that is part and parcel of what it is to be a human right Mm -hmm. and so we all, we're all going to have that voice. The, the question is how much power we give that voice. And, and just recognizing it, it's fear, it's our fears trying to keep us safe. It's our fears trying to have us avoid situations where we might be rejected or we might be exposed as inadequate, hence that mm-hmm. imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. And, and not giving that fear the power to call the shots. And and sometimes one of the things I do, I, I run women Live Brave Women's Weekends. And uh, and anyone who's listening who would love to attend one of my weekends, I just jump onto my website and you can you can sign up for updates. But what I get women to do at the weekends, and I and I found helpful myself is, if you've got a repetitive little voice in your head saying, "Who are you to do that?" or "You're not talented enough," or "You just don't know what you're doing," "You don't know what you're doing," or "You know you're never going to." Say it out loud with a funny voice. You know, make yourself sound like Daffy, Daffy Duck or, you know, or, um, I don't know, Mickey Mouse or some cartoon character or something. Just do it with a funny voice. And as you hear yourself saying it again and again, you go, oh, my God, that's ridiculous. I mean, I can't believe I'm buying into that. I can't believe I'm letting that that thought dictate the direction of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it can help help us to separate out from that negative voice in our heads because we've all got we've all got it and mm-hmm. talk to people who are really successful it's not that they don't have the doubts not that they don't have the inner critic it's just that they don't let it sit there and and determine their fate that's a good point everybody's got to work with that part, part of themselves because that's definitely definitely a uh, part of, of who we are as humans so i guess we can't expect that that little voice to disappear altogether but you know when you're talking about choosing faith over fear do you recommend that that particularly women entrepreneurs who are putting so much energy out there that they really have some kind of meditation practices or self-care practices or something to help them? Yeah, I mean, um, I I put an entire chapter in my book to that, Mm -hmm. to doing more of whatever helps us trust in ourselves more deeply Mm -hmm. and to bring our best and bravest selves to our biggest and boldest aspirations and challenges. Mm-hmm. And so those little rituals and practices are vital. I, I know myself, particularly when I'm dealing with, I've got a lot on my plate, particularly when I'm feeling under pressure, mm-hmm. particularly when oh, that voice of fear is piping up the most often, mm-hmm. doubling down on that, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, what are the things that help you feel stronger, help you feel more grounded in yourself, help you be more clear about your top priorities and really discern those vital few things from the trivial many that can crowd out your day. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, simple things from, you know, literally exercising, it's it's a basic thing, but man, is it powerful. Mm -hmm. But yes, meditating. Um, I I regularly meditate and I've got, I I use a wonderful, just an app called Insight Timer, but I know there's a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's lots of different guided meditations, and yeah. that helps me. And I can pick a six-minute one, or I can pick a twenty-six-minute one, depending on my time. But that helps me re-engage with in life, just in such a better headspace and heart space. And so, to anyone who's listening to this right now, and you're going, "Oh, look, I just don't have time for that. I've got so much on my plate," and I, I'm like. You have too much on your plate not to do those things. Mm. And as I share in You've Got This, um, my own, for me, journaling um, is a really powerful practice mm-hmm. that helps me process 
through my own anxieties and my fears. It helps me helps me reframe situations, helps me emotionally be in the right space, helps me clarify what matters most from this little trivial stuff that sometimes can occupy. You know, often our stress mm-hmm. is actually not about big things. It's about the little things. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, I share how we can use journaling as a tool to to bring our best selves to life. And I, I think that's absolutely crucial and I would encourage women the world over to mm-hmm. prioritise what empowers you. You've also mentioned about surrendering resistance and I know that particularly those women who feel like they have to show themselves in a certain way out in the world and really be, um, you know, high energy and powered and, and the idea of surrender may feel a little scary. You know, what do you say about that? Yeah, I, look, I, I think sometimes we confuse surrender with giving up. Um, yes. Well, you know, it's like waving the white flag and, okay, I'm done, I'm done, and, you know, I'm rolling over and yes. just carrying me away. And it's not that. It's really about uh, giving up our fight with those things which are outside our control. Mm. And and so often we spend a lot of energy fighting, resist fighting reality and fighting things that we cannot control. And, you know, I think of the serenity prayer. Dear Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so surrender is about those things that are outside our control and and allowing ourselves the space sometimes to grieve what what we've lost what what we can't change I, I've had to do that myself I've I've had numerous things happen where I've thought this is I'm sad about this and to feel those emotions and feel them all the way through because that then allows us to focus in on what are the things that will will help us to make the very best of the new circumstance we find ourselves in mm-hmm. and I believe that Every adversity we face in life, every challenge we face, every derailed plan and unmet expectation, within it lays a hidden, often invisible opportunity for us Mm -hmm. to learn something we wouldn't otherwise learn and to grow in who we are as a human being, to become someone we wouldn't otherwise be, to be a role model for others in ways we may never have been able to role model. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, for those of you who are running businesses, you know, where is there an opportunity right now, right in the middle of the challenges you're facing, the people challenges that you're facing, the financial challenges that you're facing, the customer client distribution challenges that you're facing? There is opportunities in them right now. And, but often we are looking so much of, and we're putting so much energy into what isn't the way we want it to be mm-hmm. that we're nobody, we're stuck in a, in a mental wheelchair that, you know, where, where we're focused on what's wrong and what we can't do that's actually crippling us from focusing on what it is we can do and what's within our control. That's true. And surrender does get a bad rap, I think. So <laughs> that's a great way to, to really look at it, uh, differently than, than maybe, um, often that we do. So Marky, can you please, uh, share with everyone where they can and find out more about you and your books and your podcast. Yeah, well, I would obviously my books are all available on Amazon, um, and you've got this is available on Amazon, and I'm really excited about releasing this book into the world, particularly during this turbulent time. Mm-hmm. Um, but people can also go to my website, which is margiewarrell.com. Um, information about all my books there, about my Live Brave Women's Weekends, um, uh, uh, my own Live Brave podcast and uh, lots of videos as well of me speaking. And I, I just encourage people to pop over and even sign up for my newsletter. So um, the last chapter in your book says Own Your Power. That is really strong words that I know a lot of us resist. You know, what are some ways that we can we can claim that and really feel good about owning our power? The biggest thing that cuts us off from our power, and power I define as our ability to affect change, mm. is is our lack of belief in it. We really are powerful beyond measure, as Marianne Williamson um, wrote many years mm. ago. And, and it's an act of courage. It's an act of faith to believe in the power that resides within us and our power, our ability to be change agents in the world. Mm-hmm. And we are, we grow that power every time we dare to take action in the presence of our fear. Mm-hmm. 
And every time we take action amid our fears, we dilute the, the, pow- the power of those fears and grow our own. And so when we doubt our power, we give power to our doubts. And so to anyone, just in, in concluding, I would just encourage you, I want you to, if you think today, I'm going to show up in the world, I'm going to show up for the people around me, I'm going to show up in my business as someone who is incredibly powerful and has, has, and, and trusting in that power within you that's going to transcend any problem outside you, show up that way and notice, just physically hold yourself as a powerful woman, speak as a powerful woman, think as a powerful woman, and act then as a powerful woman. And if you do that, you will feel more powerful. And then tomorrow you do it again. And if you continually, consciously choose to live from that place, it, you build, you build up your belief in that and the world around you will start responding to you that way. The world will, will respond to you the way that you're seeing yourself. And so I think it is so important in this world where, you know, I think the playing field is still tilted against women in so many ways. There's things that are outside our control, but one thing that's in our control is to really show up as the power broker that we actually are. And when we keep doing that day after day, the world catches up. And I think that's how we ultimately create more of the inclusive and equitable and better and more prosperous world that we want to live in. And that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. And um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to to share this with us, Margie. This has just been wonderful and so powerful. And I, I think it's just a fantastic book and the perfect time for it, even though uh, timing for um, getting out there to all these events may not be perfect at this time, but hopefully all will be well very soon. And um, in the meantime, you know, your words can get out here um, to everyone who really needs to hear them. So thank you again so much for joining me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me on. So everyone, I know you enjoyed this show. Please share it with your friends. Share it on social media. Please check out Margie's books and her website, her podcast. Definitely do all those wonderful things and just help to reinforce you um, as you go forward. So once again, it's been Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.